Hello and welcome. First, I wasn't sure it was live, but now it is. <laughs> so, hello, I am Denise Wakeman, your host and guide to Adventures in Visibility. And today's show is going to be all about how to use visual branding to boost your visibility, especially on your blog. My guest today is Andrea Dre Beltrami. I hope I pronounced that right. Yep. Okay, good. I, sh I meant to ask you for. <laughs> I forgot to. But you I figure if you go by Dre, yeah, I figure if you go by Dre, then it's Andrea instead of yes. Andrea. So, yes. uh, <laughs> anyway, my guest, Dre, is a smart and sassy young woman. At least that she looks very young to me, so I'm assuming she's a young woman. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll keep um, the facade going. Okay, all right, all right. It's, it's, that's what we're going with here. Um, anyway, I met Dre, or I didn't meet her. I've been following her and her uh, awesome, you know, epic blog posts for quite some time. And then she did a mini course on visual visual branding, uh, your visual branding images, or something like that, or branding your visual images. I can't remember the name it was. It was a mini course, and I took this mini course, and I was blown away by uh, not only the content, but also how Dre presented the content, how easy it was to understand, because I am a graphic dummy. <laughs> I just, like, I can't do it. It's just beyond me. It's not my skill set. It's not in my wheelhouse at all. So, But I was really impressed. And by the end of that, um, by the end of that mini course, I decided that I was hiring Dre to help me create a branded look for my blog images and my other marketing images. We started with a couple of blog sizes, and then I said, okay, I need everything else done too. So uh, <laughs> I've been really happy with what uh, she created for me, how she communicated with me. And I just thought, you know, I got to get Andrea here in front of my audience to here on Adventures in Visibility, and that's why we're here today. So let me give you just the brief bio for for Dre, um, based on what she says, and it's true. Andrea Beltrami is a straight shooting, wine guzzling, sassy California girl who in 2012 traded in her miserable day job for her lifelong dream of self employment. Over the last two years, Dre has helped solopreneurs and small business entrepreneurs from around the world create a vision for their voice. And I love that that image, a vision for their voice. She helps entrepreneurial badasses propel their online success by creating branding and visual strategies that reflect their unique personality and style. And indeed she does. So welcome, Dre. I am so happy that you're here with me today on Adventures in Visibility. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm super stoked to be here. And finally, like you said, connect. It's like we've been emailing and talking and chatting, and this is the first actual face-to-face -face for us, so I am so excited to be here. You are like somebody I admire so much, just watching you, seeing how you interact with people, um, seeing what you create, reading your blog posts. I mean, it's just awesome. So I would like to start off by... Um, asking you kind of a foundational question because I don't really know this answer and maybe others don't either or maybe I just didn't you know look hard enough but I'd like to you know find out from you like when did you discover you know design was your thing and how did you get started with design as a business uh, calling for you it was really an evolution I would love to say that I knew what I wanted to do um, so uh, it's funny because I think some of us find our career and some of us, our career finds us. And that was kind of the thing for me. My career found me and it was a long evolution. I've always been creative and artistic and I've done, you know, painting and drawing and not that I'm good at any of it, but I've always just loved all that stuff. So uh, I ended up going to college for interior design and thought that I was really going to love that. And while I do love that, uh, it wasn't a career, you know, it was a hobby and I was trying to make a hobby a career and, and it sort of sucked all the fun out of it. But I learned so many amazing things in that. And then shortly uh, after that, because I was going, I was working in corporate America to put myself through school. 
uh, I was given a chance to do some web coding and learn web design in my corporate job. So I took a lot of my interior design into the web world. I learned the techie part of it with all the boring coding and all that stuff. Slowly that segued into graphic design. And the thing was that all three of them really had pieces that I loved, but it wasn't a perfect fit. And when I decided to take my freelance business online, because it was really just word of mouth and referral and local business, when I decided to take it online, I realized the importance of branding. And I really dove into that. And when I discovered that, everything came together for me. It was really just the, the foundation of visual strategies. And I took a piece of everything uh, I learned from interior graphic and web design uh, to to do what I do today. And so it's a, it's a little bit of mix of a background of 10 years in, in, in design fields of all different types. Uh, and I just kind of found my groove there. And that's why I say it's like a visual strategist. It's a little bit of everything. It's really understanding the power of visuals and how to translate your voice into a visual presence. So that's my mojo these days. And, and it finally fits like a friggin' glove. Yeah, I can tell that it does. It's, um, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Some people are seeing this and some people aren't. So, uh -oh. um, yeah, what Maybe I would they like need to refresh. Yeah, that's what I'm just, I'm going to type that into the comments. So if we right. can just hold that thought here Perfect. for a moment. I'm in a holding uh, pattern. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I'm not sure what's going on here. Refresh. Good old tech. Yep, good old tech, exactly. Um, let me see what's going on. So just taking a little hiatus here. Somebody said they're not seeing it on YouTube either. That's odd. Ooh. Yeah, it says live on my side. Yeah, it says live on my side too. <laughs> may just be live for us. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I mean, this is public, so. Okay. Hmm. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Are you? Yep. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, it's not... Uh, We're not live? It's live. It's live for you and I. Oops, I lost you. You did? Yeah. Well, you didn't lose my voice, right? Nope. I have okay. your voice. I don't have That's your voice. I'm like, wait, you're answering me. How did you lose me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you are. Okay. Okay, it says live. Um, oh, wow. Okay, well, you know what? I think we're just going to have to carry on and hope this is recording and um, then get back to people. So, you got to do what you got to do. Let's do it. Exactly. All right. So, You've put together all these different disciplines of visual media, basically, you know, through your through your studies, your expertise, your work, your etc., and come up with this whole visual strategist thing. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things I know that you talk about is a visual or a um, branding guidelines and putting together like a style guide. Can you talk a little bit about that and how do you figure that out for your business? It really starts with a discovery phase. I mean, a lot of people want to jump right into the designing and the creating of things, but it really starts with discovery. And, and that is, is the foundation and guide that's going to help you create your guidelines. So it's, it's figuring out things about the look and feel that you want your brand to evoke and, and the things that you stand for and your own personality and style. It's figuring out those and really diving. It's really, it's a soul searching process is what I call it, uh, to figure out what you're all about. I mean, for your brand, it's like the adventure side and the, the spontaneity and the risk taking and the, uh, the, the happiness that you get when you have this like adrenaline, you know, pumping. It, it's, it's figuring out those principles. And then you take those and you create your guidelines. And, and your guidelines are like the bones of your entire branding. Everything uh, is an extension of them. So this is defining your color palettes and uh, or your color palette, your fonts, uh, the decorative elements, your logos, your logo variations. 
then everything on the visual side of your brand that you create is dictated by those those guidelines. So, so even for a color palette, it's like, okay, great, pick five colors. You actually want to define exactly how each color is used. So you should have, you know, a background color. You should have an action color that should be everything, you know, all buttons and links and anything that somebody can click should be one color. So it's about defining every part of your visual brand. And then now when you're creating an image, you know exactly what colors you're using for your fonts. You know exactly what fonts you're using. You know exactly what decorative elements, you know, this kind of this sort of frame like we created for your image with the arrow. Mm -hmm. You know, that's now a signature part of your brand. And every time you have any kind of image, which you're doing wonderfully, that's part of it. And, and using those guidelines builds up the consistency and the familiarity that leads to brand recognition. You know, that's what it's all built on. So you have to start, uh, you know, at the discovery, but you've got to define those, those branding guidelines and use them in every piece of your business. Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting because I've been getting a lot of feedback too on the images and people are really liking how the arrow points to the URL and that sort of thing. And, yep. you know, and it made so much sense when you came up with that. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. It's like this, this like route that you travel to get to the exactly. end point. You know? Yeah, and everywhere like, oh, you Oh my go. God. <laughs> yeah, and everywhere you go, right, it's like there's an arrow. Like when you're driving, when you're traveling, everything is like, go this way. This is the direction. So, and how simple. It's really simple. It's really subtle. It doesn't take mm -hmm. away from any kind. You're using it for quote images and with, with stock photography. It works for everything, but it's that. It's like that is such a, such a huge adventure like look, and, and it's really simple and subtle. So, yeah. so it doesn't need to get crazy, but it has to stand for what you stand for. Right, right. Okay, so how do we bring that, you know, specifically to our blogs, you know, to, because that's, um, you know, if that's our foundational piece of online real estate, then we need to, you know, integrate all that. So how do you go about implementing that with a client, for example? We start with those guidelines. So if it's the color palette and you've defined every, everything that you're using, then that's how you use it on the blog. So if, if you have, you need to put your action color. So like I said, you need to make sure every link, every button and anything that's clickable is your action color on your blog. Then, you know, you define a certain color maybe for your headlines or sub headlines. Then you go through and you make sure your entire blog has that consistency. You know, the sidebar titles uh, are, you know, the same as the sub headline. Your header has got to have your logo in it and it's got to have uh, a tagline in it. And your background, you know, if you use a texture or a background for your guidelines like you do in your images or something, that may be the background to your blog. Uh, everything that you defined in your branding guidelines should be applied to those elements that they're defined for on your brand. Uh, and it's just kind of like what I say, it's your brand recipe. So you've got to put the ingredients in when they need to be put in and where they need to be put in so that you can craft that final recipe, your brand recipe. So, you know, I would imagine that it's really important for someone to start with this before they start designing their blog, for example, before they set up their blog, because, and I think a lot of people don't do this. Like I know I didn't. <laughs> well, and I was gonna say, and we saw, and I, and I gave you some suggestions. I was like, I hope you don't mind, but I want to give you some <laughs> suggestions on how to use them more consistently on your blog. So, yes, a lot of people don't do them at the beginning. If you're just starting out, by all means, that's where you have to start is defining them. But it's not to say that once you know you have the blog up and running, that it's you know, oh, screw, screw it. You know, we can't do yeah. it. You just have to go back. You know, and, and blogging these days with WordPress is really easy to change things. Um, I know you have a web guy, so it's like, it's really simple coding for someone that knows how to do it. I mean, it shouldn't be an expensive job to outsource to a, a web person. And, and they can make sure that every link you have is a certain color. So you don't have to, in every blog post, you know, make that little, that link a different color. There's really easy ways with CSS coding to make those things happen. So like I said, then, then, you know, you, you're already to step three. You still need to go to back to step one, define those things and then infuse them into your blog. It's never too late to define your brand or to polish things up. 
Right, right. Um, yeah, th that's what I often tell people is that, you know, it's not written in stone. <laughs> You know, the blog, that's mm -hmm. what makes them so great is that yep. you can tweak them as you go. I mean, you t you made those suggestions to me and I immediately said, okay, s change this, you know, and yeah. it's done, you know, within 24 hours. And, you yeah. know, it makes a huge difference. And, um, you know, it's like for me, I'm like the the cobbler, you know, with whose kids have, don't yeah. have shoes or something. Yeah. But. Exactly. <laughs> The changes you made were really simple changes, like you said, done in 24 hours. I mean, yeah. three or four really basic things that, like you said, you had your web guy do. It, it can it can change and streamline and polish your website like you wouldn't imagine. It's yeah. it's that powerful. Your brand new guidelines. I mean, it, it's a it's a job. It's a task, but it, it makes a world of difference. It makes yeah. all the difference. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I realized is that I don't have to think about as much stuff anymore. Like, you especially, you know, when I'm adding that, you know, major image to a blog post or I'm creating a quote image, um, I don't even think about it anymore. It's not like, oh, which font's going to look good on this one? You know, I just exactly. say, it's this is my font yep. <laughs> and this is the color yep. and then it's done. Yep. So it's like, it just saved me so much time. Yep. Um, you know, you talk about the no like, and trust factor. And I know that these, this is all sort of, we've been covering this in, you know, in little bits and pieces here, you know, with the previous questions, but how does consistency contribute to that? Well, here's the deal. Consistency allows people to build that, uh, to train themselves to your content, right? So train yourself to your style and to the look and feel of your brand. So when they see your work and your content in their streams or out somewhere on the interwebs, they immediately know it's yours. And a couple things happen with that. One, it, it breeds that familiarity. Uh, two, if they keep seeing it, they're going to want to explore it more. And I can't tell you how many people tell me that. It's like, I saw your stuff for a couple months, never clicked on it, but I consistently can tell your content and it's always appearing in my feeds. So I just finally explored more. And then there's a relationship built, right? And so, so when we see something, we, we know this in our regular lives, you know, our real lives. When you see something repeatedly, there's a comfort built, there's a familiarity built, and that leads to trust. I mean, and, and the know and like. So, so it gives you, and here's the deal. We're all told we have these seven or eight seconds to grab someone online or, or we lost them forever. I argue that point because branding extends that by leaps and bounds because I don't have eight seconds. I have every time I show it, show up in someone's feed and, right. and that extends that and that, and that allows me to court them and, and, and tease that out and build that relationship and not lob things at them or, or, try and hustle for eight seconds to win. Who, who does that happen with? It doesn't happen. That's not real life. Uh, it, it's really a process and an evolution and branding makes that happen organically and naturally. And it can really lead to a deep relationship, which is exactly what the no like and trust factor is truly like, not this eight seconds, like, okay, I'll watch your video. That's not building that. It, right. it's, it happens over the course of time and branding, like I said, it, it extends your ability to reach someone flat out. You know, I think that it also unconsciously tells people that you know what you're doing. You're serious. Yeah. 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 Th that you are, you know, professional, that you are serious about what you're doing. Like you said, that you are there for the long haul. Yep, I agree. I mean, you have to, you want to be taken seriously. And having something polished in any way, in any part of our life, that that gives us a little bit more confidence in whatever that is that we're looking into. So I agree. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting because uh, when I first started 
blogging in 2004. I had a business partner at the time, and our the name of our business was the Blog Squad, and um, you know, we did have a logo and we did have a look and feel and we did a lot of public speaking and we wore black suits and pink blouses and, you know, it was, it was very, you know, kind of that mod kind of look that we developed mm -hmm. and people always knew, like, it was like, oh, is Denise going to be wearing her pink this time? You know, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it was everybody knew and then when I started shifting away and, you know, on my own and, you know, I just never really got to it. So now I feel like I'm back and back on track. <laughs> so yeah, thank you exactly. for helping me with that. Yes. <laughs> but you see the difference. I mean, yeah. it, it's not that you haven't been able to have a business, but the difference it makes, and I'm sure you're getting feedback because oh, yeah. now I can see a Denise image like 50 miles away. <laughs> it's like nailed it. I know exactly. And, and that's the goal of it. You know what I mean? That's what you want. You want someone yeah. to know that's you and you want to create that signature style that nobody else has. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's like you said, it's more than just the the graphic visuals, it's the whole picture. So even though um, hopefully anybody watching the replay, you know, can see that behind me, I've added a new element, which is a world map, because that really, you know, I can't believe it took me this long to think of it. But, um, <laughs> you know, the thing is that that helps extend the whole idea of adventure and adventurousness which is so important to me in both my personal and business life so yeah. you know and I you know I've gotten rid of the suits you know who wears a suit on a you know trek yeah. <laughs> not me exactly <laughs> I gave away I donated all my suits <laughs> to somebody else you know yeah, I don't know them yeah so you know it's like the more relaxed casual and I've been cultivating yeah. that so yeah um you know, and that I think goes to your point about being unique, which you touched on at the beginning too, is, you know, I think a lot of people have trouble kind of getting to finding that, um, you know, what makes me different? How do you help explore that with people? You know, how do you help them tap into that unique piece? Well, here's the thing. We just don't give ourselves enough credit. Honestly, most of us are incredibly unique, uh, you know, in our quote unquote real lives. I think what happens is we get online and we think that we need to hold back and dilute or fit into a certain bubble or we look at other people and we think that that's because they're successful. It must be that, you know, their personality that works. And I know it's scary because I fell into the same, you know, I, I always talk about how I did robot marketing for a year before. I mean, it just was horrible. Absolutely horrible. I mean, you know me now. And it's like, if you would have read <laughs> shit that I wrote two years ago, you would have just been like, ooh, like icky, <laughs> icky marketing stuff. Um, what what needs to happen is you have to bring you and that's okay if you know if you're more serious and buttoned up bring you what do your friends know what are your quirks what what is it that your friends tease you about or make fun of you how do you really write an email to a friend you know do you really start with this deer or something you know it's about really pulling what we really are out. So much of us are desensitized to this marketing movement that's going on and we've got shit being lobbed at us all day and it sounds the same and it's cookie cutter and you know, packed full of all these uh, promises. What really makes us unique is who we are. You know, using, like you said, using your voice, you've gotten back to like, you're an adventurer. You're always up for anything and you're always exploring new things and you need new things and that's you. That's why the brand works because it's mm -hmm. real deal, 110% Denise. Mine is the sassy sarcasm straight shooting. That's not a front for me. It's not, that's exactly who I am. I am constantly getting in trouble because I didn't sugarcoat shit for people. And when I held that back, it's like people can tell. People, like, even if they don't know you, they know that that's not you. When people can see you, they start to resonate. So the first place to start is really you. Like, like do some exercises and ask some friends to help you. You know, it's hard because we don't really look at ourselves in that way. We're not like really re self-reflective a lot. That's not really, you know, society and where we are. But that is where what it takes. And that's why I say start at the discovery phase. 
what's the foundational stuff? Like, what's the, the five adjectives that describe you? Like, if your friends were like, she's dun, 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 what are those? You know, and that has to come out in your style, your voice, in everything you do, just how you're infusing all the adventurous stuff into everything you do. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and you know, for me, is when I realized that I mean it was like this you know thunderbolt yeah. <laughs> coming down into my yeah. head you know after my second trip to Peru I was like why isn't this part of what I'm putting out on the web because this is who I've been since I was born practically right. as the traveler as the adventurer yeah. as the experimenter you know and I never yeah. talk about that you know really too much yeah. you know and now now I do yeah I so, think we compartmentalize yeah. stuff, especially mm -hmm. us solopreneurs and us online, you know, we, we and, and it's healthy to kind of like cut off personal life from business and we, we try to straddle that healthy, but it really the secret sauce is, and, and it's this, I have the same lightning bolt, like the light hits, like it all fits, the glove comes on and fits like, like nothing else when that really clicks for you, yeah. when you really find your groove and you find a comfort with it being able to be you, that's mm -hmm. when the magic is really going to happen. And it takes time. We both know like it doesn't really happen overnight. It's an evolution and it doesn't mean that you can't start um, without having that 110% clarity, but you got to work for it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've been doing business online for a really long time and it, took me <laughs> until just a few years ago so yeah, exactly. but, but I think everything contributes everything we do contributes to that and helps us come to that that you know light bulb moment so um, visual branding is you know well visuals online have just become so incredibly important um, how do you convey that to your clients that they need to get on board because you know when I started blogging in 2004 nobody put images in their blogs mm -hmm. that just wasn't something we did nobody did but now yeah. if you don't have one nobody will read your blog so well, and that's pretty much the selling point I mean <laughs> let's look at our own habits right same thing with me like it kills me that some of the big name brands like the big social brands I'm not gonna call anybody out but it's like are you kidding me you don't have a yeah. friggin' image. I mean, just to be able to share your content, again, it's consistency and it's controlling how your brand is appearing online. You need an image. You need a branded image. So all I ask them is their own habits. Like, do you enjoy just staring at a screen full of text or is that a little bit daunting? And do you like, you know, it, it's easier to read. It's easier to digest. It's easier to share. It, it's not a hard sell. Uh, I think the biggest barrier for people is knowing how to create them, you know, knowing what to do, how to create that image, which is why I had that mini course. Um, but these days, you know, Canva, PicMonkey, they make it easy. So yeah. there's no excuse not to use images. It's absolutely absurd. There's, there's all pros and no cons. It just takes a little bit of learning the principles of a good blog, you know, branded image, and you're rocking and rolling. And like you said, you create a template, which is what we did for you, and you don't have to think about anything. Your fonts are chosen, where you put your headlines in the image are chosen, how the image looks. Like you said, you have to swap out the text, and if you are going to use a photograph, swap out the photograph. It's easy. Right. How many minutes does it take you to do a blog image now? Uh, the longest part for me personally is figuring out what image I want to use. Right. <laughs> but none of the other stuff takes long because now it's just zip, zip, zip. You know, it's like, you know, type in the title and bam, it's done. You know, and that used to take me probably at least half an hour as right. I fiddled with stuff. And now it's just, okay, what image? Because I use a lot of my own images. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll use a, some stock photography if I can't find something of my own. But... You know, what I tell people now is like, we have this amazing piece of equipment now, yep. <laughs> smartphones that have cameras on them, yep. take pictures of everything. Exactly. And so, you know, I, I have thousands upon thousands of pictures now. And, 
you know, I, I you know, take a picture of the sky and just use that as the background. I mean, I did totally. that. I, I go running and I was like, oh, OK, nice sunset. Click, you know, yeah. and, you know, take a picture of your desk. Like how yeah. many people use the desk computer image? Like I see it all up, but it works. It's great. Yeah. There's no barrier. Exactly. Like I yeah. said, there's, there's no reason not to do it. And there's, there's plenty of free resources. Like you just said, phone, Canva, there's no yeah. reason not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the people who developed Canva, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. 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 I, I in the beginning I felt bad for graphic designers because I personally know a lot of graphic designers and you know and I know that it impacts their work but you know you still have to have a design eye you know the the <laughs> the templates don't necessarily you know I could start changing out templates on Canva and it looks like shit right you know but <laughs> exactly. no and you that's know, a, also a basis it's not your brand either I mean can right. you imagine how many people are using those templates so and I kind of have a whole rant about graphic not even just graphic designers but designers and the fear of becoming irrelevant I mean it's like anything else how many retail stores struggle because there's an online market now you just gotta roll with the times people so thank you you know, we can't just be sitting here fearful because by empowering people to do their own shit, that's going to make us irrelevant. I can't stand that mentality. So yeah, I'm yeah. happy to teach people how to do it themselves if they want to do it themselves. I mean, you hired me. You went to the mini course, learned how to do it, and you hired me. Right. For me, it's like I'm, I'm totally happy to empower people, and it has not affected my ability to get business in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it had right. the other. It had the opposite effect. I've gotten more business for it. So that's a whole different rant though. We won't yeah. go there, even though I just did. Well, you know, I totally agree. And it, um, you know, a hundred, a hundred percent because, uh, you know, I saw, you know, I attended a course and saw, I don't want to do this. I can't, you know, it's like, this isn't even something that right. like I can, but it's not going to look as good unless I go to a professional you know who right. knows how to do this so right. you know that's what i encourage my clients to do too yeah you can do it yourself and maybe that's fine for some things but then you know go to a professional when it's time to get serious exactly. so um we're at the half hour now and because we have no idea if this is recording or not if it's not <laughs> i'm gonna really cry but um <laughs> We can read you. I'm happy to come back, girl. Yeah, yeah, we will if it didn't record, I, if I hope. But um, so let's just, you know, make the assumption that it's recording. And I want to ask my final question, which is, what is your most memorable adventure? And as you know, anything counts as an adventure to me. So I would just love to hear what that is for you. Well, the... The two different ones are definitely the adventure of being a soulpreneur. That is a daily adventure, and I love that. But honestly, I'm kind of like, you, you got to get out and really experience something. So my best adventure is my trip to Thailand. I went there for three weeks, and it was a once in a lifetime. I mean, you couldn't get me further from everything I know than to put me in Thailand. Uh, and it was amazing. It was a, the best trip. It was five years ago and I still reminisce and look at the picture. There were so many adventures, so much new stuff. And I, I'm with you. I love to travel. I, I would love to just plop me somewhere I have no idea anything about and explore the hell out of it. So I need to go back. But Thailand is the adventure for me that still is at the top of the list. Yeah, I've uh, been to Thailand twice, and the first time it was before it really became a tourist, you know, uh -oh. destination or yeah. a travel destination, and that was in 1979. There wasn't even anything in English, so and I was alone. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Since then. Yeah, yeah. When I went back again, a, you know, a few years later, it was totally different. But yeah, I love Thailand. Also, it's oh, a beautiful country. So gorgeous. Well, thank you. So what is the best place for folks to find you online? Make sure they can do that. Yeah, all the, the social spots. I'm really, really active on Google+, Plus, which is where we met. Uh, so come explore me over there or go to the brandedsolopreneur.com and uh, hop on the, the society list because there are, you know, a ton of perks. We have a private Facebook group and 
uh, lots of free downloadables and all that stuff. So either track me down at the website or come find me on Google Plus. Those are two of the my best spots that I'm really like chilling at all day. So come say hi, visit. Let me know if you have any questions. Holla at your girl. Yeah, I was going to say uh, or ask if your um, if the society is open for new members because that is just really an amazing resource you've created there. Absolutely, and it's growing really fast, and and there's so many amazing people in there. So the only requirement is that you get on the list, and and as soon as you subscribe, you get an invite to the group. So Excellent. I highly encourage people to go there. There's just a wealth of information and a lot of really badass people like yourself uh, <laughs> that are always offering support and help, and it's a great place for soul yeah. cares. Yeah, I've noticed it's an extremely supportive group. So congratulations on putting that together. Thank you. So um, that brings us to the end. So I just want to um, remind uh, viewers that you can get on the list to get advance notice of Adventures in Visibility at adventuresinvisibility.com. If you prefer to take the adventures on the go with you when you're on your own adventures, you can get it as a, as a podcast as well. And that is at adventuresinvisibilitypodcast.com. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. And um, the last thing I want to say is that uh, my next online visibility challenge starts on Monday, June 15th, and it's going to be about optimizing your blog for better conversion. So this was a perfect segue into this because a lot of what uh, you need to optimize on your blog is your visual branding. So uh, <laughs> I'll be referring everyone to this, and if they're not, uh, if this wasn't recorded, then we'll be doing it again. <laughs> so, Sweet. Anyway, Dre, thank you so much for. Um, being here with me today, sharing your expertise, and hopefully uh, recording it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for having me. It was a blast. And if we have to do it again, 2.0 will be just as epic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you so much. Have an adventurous day.